My Story in the Beginning by Catherine Ann Schuhart Piazza. In deep despair, I, I am lying on my twin bed in a tiny two-room apartment, darkened, darkened on purpose by brown plaid curtains drawn tightly to keep out not only the cold air spilling through the windows, but any inkling of light that might not that might try to sneak in. I cry deeply in pain, emotional pain, pain of aloneness, pain of neglect, pain of fear of tomorrow. My parents were divorcing. I was flunking out of junior college. No one was there anymore. No parents, no grandparents, no brother or sister, no one. Out of my despair, I said, God, either take my life or give me life. I really didn't know God who, I didn't, I didn't really know who God was, but it seemed like my last hope of ending the pain. I tried to, I cried, <laughs> I struggle the best. <coughs> I cried a little, a little more deeply on my already wet pillow. Then I stopped. I cuddled my lion tightly next to my heart and closed my eyes. I don't remember falling asleep the night before. It was Saturday morning, time to go pick up three buckets full of fresh carnations that I would be selling on a street corner in East Plano to make a little extra money. It was a pleasant excuse to leave my dark two-room apartment. I set up at a gas station next to the curb near a busy intersection. I gathered up a bunch of flowers and extended my hand to get the attention of passerbys. People were buying in bunches this day. It was a good morning to sell carnations on a street corner. One tiny blue car slowed down in the lane next to me as it passed by. The driver was extending his hand out the passenger window while holding a green paper flyer. I had no choice but to grab this green paper flyer as he passed by. Then he turned into the gas station and parked. I was a little puzzled, a little concerned, but I had carnations to sell. He, might, he came right up to me and asked if I had read the green flyer. I had not, but maybe I should. I said something about, it said something about a weekend retreat. What was that? He tried to explain it, but I was still a little fuzzy about it. He pointed out a girl's name and phone number printed on the back of the flyer. Give her a call, he said. She will explain it to you. It will be fun. He walked back to his tiny blue car and drove on down the street. What his name was, I cannot remember to this day. I sold out of carnations. The pink ones went first, then the red ones. The white ones were usually the last to go, on, and on this Saturday, it was no exception. For a change, I finished early, so I decided to go home and call the girl whose name was on the back of the green paper flyer. I didn't know, I really don't know why I decided that, probably more curiosity than anything. What the heck was a, was a retreat and would it really be fun? I could use some fun. So I did that, I called her. What her name was, I cannot remember to this day. She invited me to drive down to her apartment and talk for a while. I told her I would, but why I said that, I really don't know. I easily found her street, even spotted a parking space right in front. I got out of my car, walked up the steps to her second story apartment door, and she opened the door quickly like she was waiting for me. She greeted me with a welcoming smile that made me feel safe invited me into her modest apartment. We sat at a small breakfast table, big enough for only two placemats. She told me more about the retreat. I understand, understood it to be like, a little like the YMCA day camp when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> now that was some fun I could relate to. Then she asked me if I had ever heard of the four spiritual laws. I said, no. She reached across the small table to grab a small, a very small leaflet. She opened it to the first page and read it out loud. 
explaining that because of sin in my life, I could never cross the big gap that sin caused to get to God. At this very moment, I was still numb, still a little fuzzy. I had hit rock bottom just the night before. I don't know why I was there, why I drove myself to her apartment, but I was present and I continued to listen. She turned the page and read out loud that God's own son volunteered to come and be a bridge over that gap between me and God. But to do that, the son had to die on a cross. She pointed to a little drawing on the page. The cross was laying across the gap between me and God. She said, this is what he did for us so that we can forever be with God who is our creator and father. Then she asked me if I would like to say a prayer to ask Jesus into my heart. I did not know what that meant, still wondered why I was at her apartment and what was really going on, but I trusted her. And I trusted the boy who handed me the green paper flyer out the passenger car window. That's all I knew for sure. Then I remembered the words I said last night, God, either take my life or give me life. Maybe this is why I'm here. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> it just... I repeated the words that she read out loud on the last page of the leaflet. Then I said my goodbye and, and thanked her for what, I, for what I still didn't know. I didn't feel any different. <coughs> I drove home to my tiny two-room apartment, but at this moment, the room seemed too dark. I walked over to the brown plaid curtains and opened them wide to let in some light. The thought came to me that I had an old tattered black covered Bible that belonged to my mother when she was a young woman. I don't know why I brought it with me to the apartment, but until now it has been collecting dust on the bookshelf. I propped my once wet pillow up against the wall and plopped down on my twin bed. The girl I just visited told me to start reading in the book of Matthew, so I read. I do have a post note. It has been nearly 50 years since my own day of salvation took place. God, through his son Jesus and the Holy Spirit, have faithfully shown me so much about them, about his unconditional love, about the freedom of forgiveness, that Jesus took my forsakenness so that I would never be forsaken, that he cares about every single little thing about me, that he is able to meet me where I am no matter how many times I go around the mountain. He will never stop loving me and will never forsake me. I want everyone to know what I know. I want everyone to have a genuine, personal, one-on-one -on -one relationship with him that he is able to do anything that I ask from warming my feet under the covers on a cold winter night to giving me the strength to lift up heavy objects to finishing a perfect project to calming down my cats to making shampoo and deodorant last longer than it should to protecting me in places where I was where I was not even aware that I was in danger to wrapping his warm big arms around me with a hug I could actually feel and when I needed it most to dot 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 I could go on and on and on people who don't know him like this are really missing out I want them to know about it about him I can't live without him that's for sure thank you